Be'ezus Hashem, as we said on the chat, this will be the last shear for this, uh, this segment um, of it. And I think with Hashem's help, we'll be able to, to finish uh, Parak Bez, which is a good place to stop. Um, Parak Gimel basically takes everything that we've been learning about in the standpoint of the mushal, of the parable between uh, the, the, uh, the Ashir and the Ani, and then it really teaches us you know, how to see that in the dynamic between us and Hashem. Um, so we've mentioned that a little bit in the past, but, uh, but, but we're going to try as, be- as best as we can. It's, it's, it's not that much. It looks a bit more than it is. We're going to start with, um, with Ostalid. Uh, so it's on page Chafei, on the bottom left-hand corner. And from there, okay, Baruch Hashem, we made it. And from there, um, we're going to, with Hashem's help, we're going to push forward through the end. And then we're going to give everybody a couple of weeks break to sort of either review or to process. Um, and, and I think most importantly, to put this into practice, you find some really beautiful place in nature and you go out and, you, and, and we actually try to do some of this work. Um, and then Elul, we're going to, we're going to jump back in, okay, with, with Parak Gimel. So that's just technical announcement number one. Number two, I don't know if anybody here asked for a book, um, but I, I figured anyway, it's good to have stock over here. Um, but this is, Baruch Hashem, the hardcover version of the, the brand new book, From My Heart to Yours. Um, and it's available for 20 pounds if anybody's interested. So we have a couple of, a couple of copies here. Um, okay, all with Hashem's help. So let's, let's jump in, back into, into our learning. I'm still getting over the flu, so I'm not, I'm not super uh, strong with my voice. I'll try the best that I can without having a coughing fit. But let's, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's take a look at Ostalid. We've spent a lot of time in the past couple of weeks, delving into the deeper dynamics of the relationship between the Ani and the Ashir, between the pauper, between the person who's collecting funds and the giver. And we spoke about many different shades of dynamics across the spectrum as to how this um, dynamic can sort of evolve, if you will, from the standpoint all the way on the, on the least relational level, right? From a person who's just giving and the person who's receiving and whatever they get, they get, right? But then all the way, all the way over across to the other side of the perspective where it leaves the category even of just on the surface, you know, this person's collecting, this person's giving, and it merges into a friendship. Right? And this, again, was all a parable, which, like I mentioned, hopefully when we restart the Shirim and Elul, we're going to get into the, the, the nimshal. Right? We're going to get into the, to the meaning of the parable and how that relates to Hashem sort of creating space in such a way where we can give Him something, like what that means. To walk into the, to the space with Hashem where we don't simply feel like we're asking in order to get, but we feel like there's a, there's a mutual dynamic a symbiotic relationship where we're giving and we're getting, we're getting and we're giving, and the sum total of that dynamic affords us much more, right, than, 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 than either of those dynamics themselves, in such a way that, again, it leaves the category of a technical kind of um, transactional relationship, and it becomes uh, a friendship with a, with a capital F, you know, the ultimate friendship with our ultimate friend. Okay, so let's, let's round out this chapter um, by taking a look at Ostalid Vihine. You see where we are? Yeah, page Chafei? Okay. So he says, Now that we've spoken about the ultimate levels, you remember we, we put it into the context of tefillah, you remember we spoke about three levels, the first three brachos, and then the middle, however many brachos, I told you I'm not good at math, and then finally sim shalom at the very end to round it out, which is the ultimate intimacy, we said, Ki ba'ar panecha, right? We come face to face with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, um, Raise your hand if you've tried to experience that in tefillah. I'm just curious. Is that, is that no. yeah, the same? No. Um, in the bracha of Sim Shalom, or at least throughout Shman Esrei, it's, it's just good to, to recognize that the learning that we're doing is meant to be, it's meant to be put into action as much as we can. So if we haven't done it, Rach Hashem will all have many Shman um, in the in the coming days and months and years and decades, till 120 and beyond. So we'll be able to put this into, into practice. But that, that's the way we should be thinking. It's not just a theoretical study. But we have, the main thing is the avoda. Right? That's the main thing. Okay. So, so, so he says, all of this, ein zeh, which is everything we've been learning, is not a davr shal mabekach. It's not a simple thing. Lahagdil kamaser shal mekabel. To build up someone else's self-confidence in the context of interpersonal relationships, right? Person to person. Not a simple thing. I'm sorry, you can have a person who 
Ba'atzmusa in the person's sort of essence is animakabli. He's not like a, like an actual recipient, not on any level. But this is not a kind of person that you look at and say, oh, there's a person who takes, or there's a needy person, or a person who is in a position like a pauper, or a person's going around collecting. No, this person is self-sufficient, was never impoverished, was never a pauper, was never in a position of needing to take. But sometimes, all of a sudden, at a particular point in life, at a particular stage, phase, circumstance, something happens, <coughs> excuse me, where all of a sudden, they're in the position of of taking. The imkain kaimasa in a kaishvala so such a person okay, like they don't have the psyche of a of a of like of a needy person who like we've been mentioning is always second guessing other people's uh, you know, kindness toward them and always wondering they they feel an essential self uh, a sense rather of 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 a lack of self worth, of neediness. Right? That, that something's missing. Such a person of a kal efshalakhaskal roima masruchai you can easily encourage such a person. They haven't embodied that mentality, right? So such a person generally has a healthy sense of self. Something happened, they slipped, you know, they're struggling financially, whatever it is, but it doesn't cut so deep. Such a thing is easier to do. Let's turn the page over. <laughs> but you can have a person, again, following this parable, who, who, who's like a career pauper. Like this is what, they're, this is what they do for a living. Sometimes you have... And not just people like this. Sometimes you could even have societies like this without getting into that too deeply now. But you can literally build a, an entire society where everyone is just like, this is what we do. And I've got to collect. Collect funds. And such a person, Chas V'Shalom, never had a, what he calls here a good day. Or not like a, like a Yom Tev, like a Yom Tov. This person never had, they never sensed um, independence. They never sensed confidence, the ability to actually stand up and do something on their own, think something on their own, make a choice on their own, right? They, they, so they don't, they don't have that sense of, of, of natural self-worth value. Adam Kazeh, and I think all of us know people like this, maybe some of us are people like this, but it's not all of us know people like this. Adam Kazeh, Natan Kule Berucha and Ishbara. This person is completely given over completely um, limited by their their um, their broken spirit their brokenness because at their very essence at their root there's something there's something nafool what is the word nafool what's the shosh of the word nafool is nafal which means to fall nafool means like there's something fallen the something inside of them like at the, at the core of what's supposed to make up a person's identity is nafool but that's how they perceive themselves, like people who are just needy, less than, aren't able to stand on their own two feet. Not easy to, to give such a person chizuk. Not easy. Because there are layers and layers and layers of this. Such a person, very difficult to encourage. This avoda, this attempt to boost the confidence, courage, self-worth of such an individual, it takes a long, long time. He speak about educators that deal. He's going to say in a, in a couple of sentences about you know, like children who didn't grow up in, in environments where they were given the nurturing. I think we've spoken about in previous classes, right? The space, the confidence, the, the self-worth. And, and, and there are teachers or, or, or therapists, you know, more likely, that work with these kids or individuals for years and years and years until they're able to really break through and and give this person the th the therapy right which means the the um the the rehabilitation that they need sometimes much later on in life to to compensate right and take the place of that which they should have gotten you know as children naturally but they didn't get but it doesn't happen like this because you're dealing with with it with an individual who at the most fundamental levels of their psyche are, are they, let, let's use this. They don't. They don't believe you. So you can tell them they're great. You can tell. You can see in them what they'll never be able to see in themselves. But it's not enough because they need to see it, and it sometimes takes a very long time working with people to to really, you know, until they really feel like okay, I I I'm enough. Like I can do it. It's like this described as like a like a bottomless pit. Sometimes, if people didn't get that as as children, it's like a void that's incredibly difficult to fill.
and it requires, like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. You know, it, it, it's, it certainly takes a village to raise an adult. Not easy, so especially like this. Eitzel Isha Shekazet. Sorry, excuse me. Yeshua Amal Gadol. It takes such hard toil, until like it really sinks into their heart and soul. This is what it means. We're using this terminology. Hagdalas koma. We said it's difficult to translate. Koma is like the stature of a person, and the, the, the worthiness of a person. Hagdala means to increase it, to, to, to expand it. So this is what we're trying to do, to expand the person. Many people are small, right? But they're not small. They've just been beaten down, you know, overtly, covertly, big T traumas, small T traumas, whatever it is, but they've been beaten down until they feel so, they feel so little. And expanding such a person's coma takes an architect, you know? It take, takes a real architect. Pshuta kimashma avachin smechim bo ba'emes. Until like they can they can really feel okay with themselves, happy. Ki he says, like a like a like a like a troubled child, a failing child. Right, and again, failure is all relative, but relative to whatever systems we put the kid in. Um, so in that sense, harehu talosh builti yutzlach, like he gets a label. Right, one way or another, like we label, uh, not, it, we don't do it on purpose, hopefully, but on the one, on, on, on one way or another, the kid comes out after year after year after year of just not being capable, whether it's academically or whether it's socially. I think they call it today neurodivergent, right? But we don't really have systems in place that are really a- able to, to, you know, to, to, to educate you know, children in such a way where it's totally personalized and we only focus on the strengths. There's still a classroom setting. There's still 20 kids, whatever it is, to one teacher. And there's like a generality of the way that we're trying to, you know, just for practical purposes. So there are kids, which all of us know, who fall through the cracks, who are great kids, right? And have so much to, 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 to bring to the world. I think I mentioned it was in this class, or maybe Thursday night I mentioned, um, I was looking at a, a podcast of a very interesting person and, and uh, and 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 she was speaking about education, you know, and and part of what she was saying was that like there's so much focus on people's failings, meaning there's so much focus on what this person isn't good at. Let's get them a tutor. Let's try to fill in the gaps. Let's try to get them up to par. And in the meantime, well, what is this kid good at? So why don't we get them a tutor for that? You know, to not not for what they're not good at. Let's find out what their strengths are and supercharge those strengths because maybe they were never supposed to be in you know good at math. Like this, that's not their thing. It's certainly not my thing, right? That's not my. That's not. That's not what my neshama needs in the world. Hashem needs people who are super good at math, and they'll do what they're meant to do, and they'll contribute in the way that they're meant to contribute. But every kid is, you know. People, people are people are unique in that way. So, because we don't really have the, the like I said, the manpower, the capacity, the institutional uh, framework to be able to really do that to our kids, who who like he's saying over here, are. Like a yelled koshel, asher mekat nusa harehu talush built the yutzlach, just doesn't feel successful. Doesn't feel like they can do it. Doesn't feel like they can keep up. So shalom b'kal yiramu abedei Hashem is baruch hayhavli. It's not going to be easy to convince such a person that they're they're beloved to God. You know, and not only are they beloved to God, but they're so valuable in in and of you know whatever. Not even what they're able to contribute. That's already secondary. Just what they are. What they are is so difficult to get that message across to a person who's been educated that one way or another. Again, not that anybody means this, um, you know, not assuming abuse, but, um, but, but, but that they feel the opposite. This is the aspect of what we, what we refer to in Kabbalah as the mida, the sphira, the final trait of malchus, which is ultimately associated with like the vessel the receiver, the recipient, the moon, as it's embodied physically in some in, in some sense, which does not have any light of its own. Less lemagar may klum, as the Zohar Kaddish describes it. The moon has no light of its own. It only has what it receives from the sun. You have little pe- people walking around who are, who are little moons, meaning they don't feel like they have any light of their own. And so when we try to, to transform a moon into a sun or to reveal the sun from within a person who feels like they're the moon, Incredibly, incredibly difficult. Very, very challenging. 
Be'etzim you so the Baba Yosa. Like this is how these people feel. Belachain therefore, Nitzur Pam Achar Pam. It doesn't take place in one minute. It doesn't happen like this. It's it's a it's a it's it's maybe years, and decades of work. Of 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 inner work. Of work in group settings, whether it's therapeutic or or or, or other or other settings. It's 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 rehabilitation. For most of us, it's it's getting something that we didn't get in our childhood. That's that's for most people. It's a tremendous tremendous percentage point of people, and it's not because parents are evil. It's because parents are human, and it's not because the human is evil. It's because the human is human. And p- people mean well. They're just either they're not educated enough, or they they themselves like parents are also children in, in a sense. Right. Sometimes like when you become a parent, you start to realize, oh, like my parents were also like, like you know, and, and, and you start to realize, oh, well, there, there are people, too. And they, they were going through their own things. And maybe they didn't get certain things from their parents and maybe their parents didn't get things from their parents. Or if you go back two, three generations to the Holocaust, they didn't have parents. Right. Which is where many of our current issues began. So we have to see things in a broader context. But this is where most of us are struggling. This is where most of us are struggling. This is where many, many of our issues later on in life come from in, in childhood. And it seems, if you think about it, pretty, um, pretty disproportionate in terms of how so few years of either getting what you needed or not getting what you needed could have a, like such an overwhelmingly disproportionate impact on the next 70 years of a person's life. Like those years, ages, I mean, really zero in, in an ultimate sense, but let's say like, like, from the time that they can remember, let's say, even though it goes much, much, much beyond that. Some people suggest they can go even to the birth, right, and the, and the trauma of just coming into the world, and maybe even pre that. Um, okay, but let's just, let's not, not go all the way there. Let's just say a few years, childhood, adolescence, let's give it a 10-year range, somewhere there, right? The self-perceptions that are developed or not developed or developed Right in a negative sense during those years, is that's it. It's like it's going to impact one way or another. Can potentially not for sure, but it can, and to varying degrees. It's not like black and white. It's a huge spectrum. The rest of a person's life, shocking. It is shocking, right? And 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 in a certain sense, like like how does that make sense? But in another sense, it's perfectly intuitive. Those are the years that the brain is developing. Those are the years that a person's basic self definitions are developing. And if a person is raised in an environment full of pressure, full of shame, full of guilt, full of, full of um, conditionality, right, and, and, and a lack of, of unconditional love and support, it's going to be baked into their, their, their self-perception that they're less than, they're not good enough, etc. And it can take decades and decades and decades to, to work on this. Now, zoomed all the way out recognizing that this is endemic, right? I mean, this is like what most people are going through. Really, what most people are going through today. They tra- tra- trace it down um, to like an attachment theory in psychology back to people who just didn't have secure attachments growing up, right? Which is an overwhelming majority of people that later leads to addiction and so many other symptomologies which are just indicators of something that was missing. So then it turns out that like maybe if a person is experiencing that in their life, and I, when I say life, I don't mean just an isolated week or month. I mean the, 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 the narrative of a person's whole life, like I mentioned before. Maybe that's not like a bidiyeved where something went so miserably wrong. Maybe that is fundamentally what we need to work on as adults. Meaning we, we, we didn't get something or we lost something. And a huge part of developing, whether it's spiritually, whether it's psychologically whether it is practically in terms of our becoming the parents of the next generation or the educators of the next generation or the friends recognizing or sensitive of, uh, uh, toward or cognizant of this that so many other people might be going through the same thing like maybe that's exactly why we're in this world right understand like maybe it's so core to what we're meant to be learning as we take this oftentimes treacherously painful journey is to become more and more conscious of love, right? The essential love that builds olam chesed yibana, the way that we build with love. And the people that can understand that the most are the people who feel as if there's, there's, there's 
a whole pile of rubble at the core of their being that should have been this really strong foundation as a result of the lack of that. The lack of that. And when people start to come to grips with this and go through their own healing journey and process, these people become the most sensitive, the most caring, the most likely to be giving their children and others unconditional love, support, and they become beacons of light. And, and, and slowly but surely, the tide is, is reversed. And, um, and this is how I see a lot of, 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 of the work um, that's, that's being undertaken today. So it's, what we're learning now is not just, and you know, we're trying to always bring it back to like, the relevance of, of what we're experiencing, um, but, uh, but, but, but it's also part and parcel of what we're learning vis-a-vis -vis his spoke to and using this as an example, for such an individual, it's going to take, like we're saying, very long periods of time. It doesn't happen in a day. Pam achar pam, session after session, right? Whether it's therapy or whether it's his uh, spot to another type of therapy, right? Time after time. That each time when these friends get together, right, if one of them is really impaired in this way and they're constantly thinking to themselves, like, maybe, um, 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 you know, maybe it's just a show, maybe it's just a fake, like, I don't, I don't still, I don't yet feel like, wow, like this, pe this person really needs me or really wants me, etc. So each time again, the mashpia needs to, to add another layer or another element. Mechadash. As hagdolas koymasa, to build up the 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 the, sh, the um, what do we call it? The the self worth of the other. With all the different aspects, first from the standpoint again of the external of just inviting the person to the house. I'm sorry, not inviting. No, that's the third one, right? But just on the most basic bechitzonius, right? Just um, being happy to to bring the person in. And then the second thing, where they give the person a sense that they're actually gaining something from, for, right? So sh they're gaining from you as you're gaining from them. And then the third level where you invite them, right? Where, and, and each time again, you, you're just pouring, pouring love in, into, into, into this person, right? It, whether it's, again, children, whether it's students, whether it's a friend or a person that we sense needs this. And it's basically everybody you meet on the street. Basically, every person that you see has this void in their heart that we spoke about. Almost everyone. And so we become um, void fillers, you know. We're, we're there just constantly. And by the way, I made a Facebook post about this a few months ago. It doesn't depend on how much you have in your tank. Very, very important. These are two different, there's, a, there's, a, there's what's going on with ourselves vis-a-vis -vis ourselves and how our um, 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 tank is doing in terms of how full it is. But a person could have almost next to empty vis-a-vis -vis themselves. But in terms of what they're capable of giving someone else, their tank could be completely full. And, and what I mean here is in terms of not necessarily if a person's strapped for resources, let's say, like they, they don't have time because they're not giving to themselves and they're not healthy. I, I don't mean that. Right? What I mean just is in, the, is in the aspect of being able to give someone else love even if we're not really feeling it vis-a-vis uh, -vis ourselves. Like these two things are not related. So it's not like the more that you have, the more you can give. Well, in many ways, yes. But in this context, um, just to be able to, to just give to the other. Give to the other. To fill up someone, someone else's tank in such a way. Shiyavi al yichud shalom until they come again to this ultimate, ultimate pinnacle, to this place which again transcends um, transactionality. It's not about giving or taking. It's it's something new. It's something completely new. We speak about dating, which is obviously one of the ultimate, um, you know, um, arenas where a lot of these things are going to come up. Right, a lot of these things are going to come up. Feelings of inadequacy, wondering whether the person, you know, and in the dating process, whether whether it relates, let's say, to a particular individual and the dating process. This is this is to be expected, especially for people who are challenged in this area. It can be a very painful, very turbulent, very confusing um, um, journey that really needs a lot of support, you know, to a person who has a, has very little in their tank, getting rejected. Getting a no is meratic. It's 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 just completely uh, destructive. It's it's 
It's so it's so difficult, you know, and painful. Um, even when things are going well, a lot of times, and I know I experienced some of this also during the dating process, like a lot of times you're not quite sure, like like you don't want to get hurt, you know, so you're not going to put yourself so far out there, you know, because you don't really know where the other person is, and, and, and it's a delicate process, but the point is, and it's a different process than this one. It's a, di it's a different different dynamic, but the, but the end result is the same. When it, when, 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 and, it, and I bless it upon all of us, Bless Hashem, in our, in our own journey, those of us who have already have, had that to maintain it, and to everyone else, Bless Hashem, at the right time, a car of Mamish, eventually, there's just that date, you know, or that moment where it's like, okay, this, this now, everything's okay? You good? <laughs> right, this now, you say, this is something else. In that moment, the, the 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 relationship moves to a completely different different fit. It's it's like it's 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 not even um, you know like like a graph. Like it's not uh, lin it's not linear. Um, I think the word is linear or or fluid. It it jumps. It, it goes like like slowly but surely, and then almost exponentially. But it's more than a, that. It's like what they call like a black swan moment. Like boom, it's just everything changes. You know, it's just it's a complete it's a com completely different dynamic all of a sudden. And there's a sense of relief. It's like, okay, we're both there, you know. And now we can take whatever it was that we were not quite sure, you know, each 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 of the two in their own minds and hearts. And now, like, okay, we're no, we're there, you know. And there's a mutual feeling of of, of connection and love and interest and and, you know. But 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 it's 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 a very difficult journey. A very very difficult, oftentimes incredibly painful, journey that requires a lot of like we're saying a lot of support. Um, and a lot of, of, um, of r realistic expectation from the outset, knowing this is this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough, because in accordance usually with our expectation of how things will be, is is how well or the opposite we're going to be able to deal with the thing, you know, w when it arises. Okay, just a separate thing, but it's related. So this, again, is taking place like we're learning Pam again and again and again until we come to the Yichud Shalim. And at that point, the person is constructed and then it's good. And, and then there's a friendship and they don't have to self-doubt and question themselves. And, and then slowly but surely, it impacts how they show up in the world in other ways. And they assert themselves with confidence and they feel a sense of worth. And they feel that they're able not just to be a person who's taking from everybody the whole time and is just a, a perpetual schlepper, you know, a, but they're a person actually who can give, who can contribute. They step into a higher role. And, and before you know it, they're, they're, they're not just that bent over little, you know, uh, like we said, that, 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 that small person. They've been expanded. They've been expanded. They've, they've been they've been they've been they've been supercharged and 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 built 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 up, which is really the job of every teacher. To to build up the students. Okay, os hey, yesh mekabala sabala hapach, but now you can have some somebody. Let's say, who's who who doesn't understand any of what I'm saying, and I hope that. All of you don't. I hope that nobody understood any word that I said until, until now. You know, because hopefully it's so irrelevant for all of us who had such great healthy childhoods that forget about it. You know, but he says ostensibly there's a person who's like I don't get it. Like how many times can I hear someone tell me that like they love me and 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 they actually care for my presence in their home or in their you know like like how 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 many times. Like we said in the previous paragraph, pamach or pamach, but like I get it, okay. Like what? Like you know, it's like a bit much. Like could like number one, could I and need I hear this every day? Like oh, I'm so happy that you came. You mean so much. To me. Like enough, die. Like I get it, right? So he says, kan yesh lahav here taus shorashit hagoyremes l'she'ela hanal. He says, here we have to correct a very, very basic mistake that sits at the, at the premise of this question. He says, the mistake that this person is making is to equivocate, to compare the connection 
between two people who are in the dynamic of one who's giving and one who's receiving, and to then apply that dynamic between them and Hashem in such a way where there's a hiskashras chitzonis, where there's some kind of external transa- transactional relationship, and like they're only interested in getting the funds, let's say, what they what they came for. Like they don't they don't need to feel all of that other stuff, as well as and, they, and then they lift that dynamic up into the relationship with Hashem. It's like Hashem, just give me what what I need and leave me alone. Right? Essentially, that's the approach. Like, why do I need to know that Hashem loves me? Like, why do I need to know that, that Hashem is with me and, and values me and that, and that I'm able to contribute to Hashem just enough? Like, I get what I get. And, and, and that's it. As long as He's there to, you know, to, to help me pay the bills and make sure that you know, everyone stays healthy and etc. A huge mistake. A huge mistake. Why is this such a huge mistake? Because in the physical world, Shnayim. Hinam nefradim. Two people, these two people, these two individuals, giver and receiver, are nefradim, which means separate one from the other. Listen to the difference here. Each one of them has their own body, their, their own place where they live, their own soul. Each one has their own lives, their own, lives, their own ambitions, their desires, their, their stuff they're busy with. Their own day, their own like struggle, like that's each of us in this room. How many people are here? You know, I told you the math, and I'm not going through the whole, you know, Jewish counting. But if you think about it, it's pretty remarkable. It means every single one of us have, which which we're all in the same room and we're all learning the same thing now. And so there was a part of our schedules that overlapped in a certain sense. Every one of us have a completely different life. It's it's a wild thing. That means that however many people are here, there are that many different schedules with all of the different dynamics of the social settings that we find ourselves in, unless, you know, it's students in the same classroom, in the same school, so it's really the same. But generally speaking, when you deal with a group of adults, it's, it's not that way. We each have different family dynamics, different, uh, you know, priorities, different things that are occupying our time or concern, caring about responsibilities, uh, schedules from morning to evening, uh, etc. Different people, completely different lives. So when two people with two completely different separate lives interact in a, in a, in a, in a um, transactional way where they agree to help one another, so at the end of the day, I'm me, but that person is them, and we'll overlap in such a way where I'll do this person a favor, they'll do me a favor, and that's like the relationship. That, but, but essentially, that's the way that they're viewing the potential for human relationship because they're thinking very physically meaning they're thinking very um this worldly in such a sense where like i've got my own stuff going on this person's got their own stuff and you know at max these two trajectories can overlap in such a way where there's mutual benefit in a very, very, very external sense. It's like Ruvain who agrees to keep Shimon company when Shimon is very hungry and wants to eat. Now Ruvain is not getting anything from this because he's not hungry, but he's like, whatever, you know, I'll just sit with this guy. Because they agree that each one is, is, is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, sit with the other one by, by lunch break, whatever it is, right? But there's no real essential bond here where there's not just something transactional where I have my life as Ruvain, let's say. Shimon has his life as Shimon. And in this sense, we're totally okay apart. Right? And I'm happy living my life. And it's just for very, again, transactional, uh, pragmatic um, purposes that you know it'll be good if we form an alliance in such a way. But it's still very much each one with their own, with their own needs in mind, right? That isn't really reliant, essentially, fundamentally, on the other. Something fundamental is missing. At the end of the day, right? Ruvain doesn't need anything and isn't getting anything out of this. 
He's here just to give something to Shimon, which might be very nice because that's like the that's that's what they decided among themselves. But there's not a sense of, and here's the word that I'm going to use again. We've used it in the past. There's no sense of vulnerability. They're not each showing up vulnerably to say, "Wow, I rely on this. Like I I need this." And he was like, "No, I need this." And it's like, "Wow, there's something happening here that gives us each more than what we actually needed fundamentally." Because all of a sudden. The, the dynamic of the relationship is, is taken into a new category. If Shimon wants to go to a certain place and Reuven, you know, he just convinces Reuven to keep him company. Okay. But Reuven is not in a state of getting in such a way that he is at the same time both giving and receiving so that the relationship aspect is... Is, is elevated to such a degree. He would never have considered going to this other place if Shimon isn't schlepping him along. Or Shnayim Nifradim. This dynamic only applies between two individuals who are fundamentally separate one from the other. And if they are separate one from the other, each one with their own sense of self their own identity, their own past, their own family, you know, story, and uh, and and their own sense of self. Then you're right. Maybe if a person, or maybe both of them, have the had the health have had the healthy foundation that we we described the opposite of a bit earlier. That they don't need to hear every minute, you know, how much the other person needs them and and how much value they add and whatever, because like they don't. They don't. They don't really. They don't need that. They're. They're just because it was never about that. That's not the. They'll get what they. What they get, and, and they'll give what they give. But, but they're. They're each independent, and their lives are independent of the other in terms of this relational dynamic. However, of course, when we now lift this uh, dynamic, and we apply it to Hashem, which we're going to do, Bez Hashem, when we come back to this series after uh, the summer break, and and, and we continue with Parak Gimel. In Elul, we're going to see this very, very deeply. When it comes to us and Hashem, I don't have any other identity. I don't, I don't have any self. I don't have any life. I don't have any being without the creator and sustainer of all, or without the, the Ein Sof, the infinite. Again, less le megarma klum. It is not just a sensation that I have that I, 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 I'm worthless. Well, in a certain sense, fundamentally, <coughs> excuse me, existentially, it's true. Without Hashem pumping each and every one of us with life force, there is no me. There is no such thing as me. With, with, with all of whatever me it means for me in my life and what it means for each and every one of us, the ani that all of us are experiencing, have experienced, Bez Hashem, will experience until 120. It's time to leave this world. There is no that without Hashem. Ein loy kol mohus acheres. Like the person doesn't have any, any sense of life. Real life, vibrancy, vitality, everything that we associate with, with being alive. Zula sa'aras paname anoise. Without Hashem smiling down upon us. In all the metaphoric Ways that, that, we, that we mean when we say Hashem smiling down. Hashem giving us what, what we need. Hashem validating our existence by giving us ways of channeling His presence to serve as a vehicle to further reveal His glory in the world so that we know who we are in, in, in the context of history. So we know who we are you know, in the context not just of the past, or the present, but of the future. That's not something transactional. That's something absolutely um, core, fundamental, existential. 
Hamagdil Kaimasai, or Manaklai as Etsem Shores Nikudas Riusai, which in each and every moment that we're feeling that energy coming off of Hashem in his spodidus and tfila, any moment that a person wants to tap into this, realizing I'm alive, I'm alive. It's not something that it's like, I don't really need to hear today that like I matter to God. If you if it didn't matter if I didn't hear today that I matter to God, I'm dead, essentially, right? Because that would mean that it's a reflection of something much more fundamental, that it just so happens to be that for one reason or another, I, like I still have life force in me. But if I stop really believing that I'm important, right, in the grandest scheme of these things, not because I'm important, right, none of us are, but because Hashem conveys or, or, or confers, is the word I'm looking for, His infinite importance into each and every one of us, there's, no, there's nothing. It's not transactional. There's nothing. We can't carry on. You can never hear it enough from Hashem. Morning and night, he says, we will never tire of hearing literally our Creator validating our experience of life. Not just by him giving us life on the level of nefesh, but on the level of the development of that lower level life, just like happening to be alive, to flourish into ruach, into neshama, the higher levels, chaya and yichida, means those places where there's a sense of purpose, mission, um, 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 confidence, clarity, knowing what we're here to do, knowing that we can contribute, knowing that we can make a difference, knowing what that difference is, no, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If a person would tire of hearing it from Hashem, their life force would start to ebb less and less and less and less in exact correlation with how much or how little they're really hearing this and, 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 and really onboarding it into their deepest, into the deepest recesses of their heart and soul. Let's read this line again. Nimsa sheyoyimam v'lai lo yoyev v'lo yiga. Morning and night. Like day and night, 24 hours a day, a person will never grow tired or weary. Milushmoya from listening. Ad heichan hinoi ratzav chasha v'yakar v'nechshak l'fana v'zbarach. The extent to which we are ratzui, which means wanted. Chashav means prominent, important. Yakar means precious. The nechshak, we learned in one of the earlier shirim, remember cheshek, deeply desired or desirable. Lufnei Hashem Izbarach. Who would tell God to stop telling us that? That would be tantamount to telling Him to stop giving us life, essentially. Because, to, again, to the degree that we don't hear this, it means that that's the degree to which, like, there's no point, really, of living. Like, like essentially, essentially, essentially. So we would never turn that station off. If we heard that, we could never hear it enough. And the more that we heard that, the more the horizon, the limitations, the boundaries on what's possible for us in life would continue to expand and expand and expand and expand and expand and expand, and expand ad infinitum. So it turns out that the degree to which, not just like in a cliche sense, like today, oh, everyone knows Hashem loves me, like, it means nothing. It means nothing. Maybe it's better than it was ten years ago, where the bumper stickers all said something different. You know, like in a metaphoric sense, it's good that we have bumper stickers that say Hashem loves me. It's great, but you understand the difference between saying Hashem loves me and sitting for eleven hours and deeply working through the dynamics of like what does that actually mean? In what way? Like like how are we supposed to process it? What 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 form does that love take? In what sense are we necessary? In what sense are we valued, needed? Because love is just like a word that's thrown around. So today it doesn't mean much to say, oh, Hashem loves you. It means nothing, right, in a certain sense. It goes in one ear, it goes out the other. In, in Hasidus, it's, 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 it's not a, a slogan. No, this is not a slogan. You mentioned Tanya before. There is an incredibly dense, analytical, philosophical, metaphysical framework for understanding all of these concepts each and every facet details it's a science it's literally a, a, a way of life it's a way of thinking and what we're say, suggesting here is that the degree that to the degree that a person hears this message but really hears it again not just like on a slogan or happens to see it on a, on a sticker somewhere you know on, a, on a, like a telephone booth but a person really really gets it 
lives with it, puts it into practice, helps share this message with others, to the degree that we hear Hashem saying that, that is the degree to which we are alive. Think of it. Again, life can be just on a very simple level, we're functioning, we're alive. But we're saying that the quality of the flow of life inside of us as it relates to our self-perception and therefore our willingness, ability, bandwidth to be able to actually stand up and give the world what we were meant to give the world is in direct correlation, in direct correlation to how often and with, and with what depth of clarity we are hearing this message coming from Hashem. Incredibly deep, incredibly, incredibly important. Zakuk, let's go back inside. Zakuk bi Every person is abundantly needing this. Kiu nishmas ruach ba'avodas kainai. It is nishmas ruach. It fills our avodas Hashem, which is life. It fills our life with 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 life, with vibrancy. Nishmas ruach. With a breath of, of real spirit, real soul. So that we can get involved in this great love affair that's called Torah and mitzvot and Shabbos and Yantiv and, and, and Halacha, even if we can develop a healthy perspective and engagement with Halacha, even slowly but surely. Seeing it, you know, that whole system in a completely different light, in light of understanding what, what the, who the giver of the Torah is and what he wants. To give, to get, to give, to get, you know, in this symbiotic relationship. Fills it with, with love and with awe, and a feeling of connection. Kasha Yehudi Maven, when a Jew understands that a person, we have nothing. Nothing. Kikol Asher Yesh Loi, because every single thing that we do have, Hare Rak Kishutin Shein Erka Mu'uma Klape Etzama Yichud. It's like nice little jewelry, you know, in relation to the, the, the truth and the true bond of, of intimacy, an intimate connection. Umaker Liba Bekach, and a person really gets this and really comes to recognize without Hashem, without Hashem's presence, without Hashem's constant communication into the deepest recess of my heart that I matter and that I'm living for a reason that he put me here with, with talents and gifts and abilities really for a purpose to grow, to develop, to evolve the more a person realizes this the more clear it becomes that they need to hear this message yeah, 24-7 and it's not cliche, and it's not something that maybe we can mention one time in you know year seven, and then hope that for the rest of their life they'll remember that Hashem loves them. You know, this is no, no, no. This is something that like we we need to we need to really instill deeply into the hearts and souls of every single child, into the hearts and souls of every adult, especially going back to what we mentioned in the context of interpersonal relationships, how much people need this just on a psychological level, not having gotten it from their parents, not having gotten it from their schools, having, having been hurt in those formative years growing up. Everyone needs to hear this, everyone, but, but to really hear it, right? not just like the caricature of it on a, on a, on a, on a surface level. So he says, Ki, because this is the essence and the and the premise and the root and the source of our very lives, very lives. He says, this is why Chazal, our sages, instituted to pray three times in a day. And each time to say all eighteen brachos, because what are the eighteen brachos? Like we said to go through each of these three stages. Just Shmonas, right, in and of itself. Like for a woman, it's a little bit more complicated, especially the mothers, especially. It's very, very difficult. The Chas shouldn't be any guilt, different avodas that people have. But when we do get to Davin, right, as often as we, as we possibly can, this is what the journey of Shmonas, right, is. Until you get to Sim Shalom, like we mentioned last time, immersive spirituality. Ah, the Brach of Sim Shalom. That's the time, three times a day, where naturally, even without a Spodidus, without anything else, just sim shalom the way that it ought to have been said. 
would have belied the necessity for Hasidus and all the, uh, everything else. Just we forgot throughout Golas. So we forgot that Allah is supposed to is supposed to do something, right? We we forgot, like we mentioned last year. Because we need this, we need this at the deepest level. And you should know something. It's been my experience that the people who think they don't need this, and the people who are cynical about this kind of stuff, and the people who mock it, and the people who say, "Oh, it's all this fluffy, happy, clappy Judaism," are the people. Mark my words, who need it uh, the most, the most, the most, the most. It's almost a direct correlation. It's true. The people who are the most cynical of it are the people in whose hearts something has died so long ago that either there's jealousy or there's bitterness, oftentimes. And, 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 and these traits contribute to like a, like a defense mechanism. And it's so sad because I will tell you, and I've been in this world a very short period of time, but the, what I've noticed is that there come times in in the lives of, of of all kinds of people where a prevailing sense or attitude toward things like this can be shattered almost almost instantly. So you'll see people who are the most, the staunchest anti Hasidus, anti all this talk about Hashem and friendship and all this kfira and everything else. And then, and then, oftentimes you just you watch a life trajectory because people live a long time, and a little bit they start to run into a crisis, and a little bit things start to fall apart as they invariably do to one degree or another in all of our lives at, at different stages. For some, it's already happened. For some, it's yet to happen. That's what keeps it interesting. We should all have smooth lives, but Hashem. But things break. Things break. Adam la amal yulad. Nobody promised us a smooth ride. Things break. All of a sudden, these are the people who who who. Like, like I think Leonard Cohen has a has a song about what we're learning. He says, "There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in." Sometimes things need to break. Oh, and then and then there's an opening. You know why? Because then there's humility. Because you know what arrogance is? Arrogance is the cover for a a, a strong sense of inadequacy. But Rashi tells us that as it relates to the Miraglim. You remember? Moshe Rabinu tells the Miraglim to go and to scout out the land and to check. One of the things he sent him to check is whether the walls are strong or weak. Remember? Of the, of the cities. Why? Says Rashi, counterintuitive. Because the cities that have very strong walls are very, very weak. <laughs> are very weak cities. That's why they need such strong defense because they're so weak. But he says the cities that don't have any walls, those are the cities to be, to be afraid of. And it's a very deep psychological truth because it's true. The people who have the strongest defense is because inside there's, there's, a, there's a weakness. And, and, and that's why, like we talked today, Baruch Hashem, it's, it, but it's still like a cliche. It's like, it's like anything really true has the risk of being made into like a Hallmark birthday card. And like that's where it functions as truth. And to everyone else, it's a cliche. And we don't recognize it. Today we talk about the strength of vulnerability. It's a cliche, but it's really true. The people that are able to show up honestly, vulnerably, hum with humility, those are the strong people. Fact, 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 fact. Okay, let's, let's, let's just do the last, a few minutes left, yeah, a few minutes left. Um, let's, let's, let's pull through to uh, the last paragraph. Okay, let's finish up. When a Jew feels that, they, ah, they, what do they need this tefillah, you know, 18 brachas, three stages, yeah. They don't need the bond with Hashem. Mashma, it is apparent that such a person, Shehir Galatzimo, has accustomed him or herself lihistader levad. They think they're okay on their own. That's what it means. <laughs> to the, the degree that a person thinks, like, what do I need all this connection with God stuff, all this fluffy spiritual stuff? Just, you know, organize religion, you carry on, you do what you need. It means that there's something in this person who believes that they are not really reliant on Hashem. They, they don't really need to come into contact with this realization of the way in which they can't move without Hashem validating, pumping them with a sense of, of, of self, of worth. 
Yesh hastara. I'm going to read a little bit more quickly now. We're over time. Yesh hastara. There's one kind of concealment. She Yehudi achein marga shein leale adam uskeim legalis kvod malchusi zbarach b'chapula. Where a person does come to realize that the whole purpose of life is to reveal the presence of the divine, one way or another. But we're so busy with life. In a margish, he doesn't. We don't feel it. But and their heart is crying out to Hashem. Like I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know how I'm supposed to be living. But it's just so tough. We're so distracted. We're so like it's 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 almost impossible. And that's okay. That's life. What's referred to Rabbi Nachman and Tarden and Vav in the 56th lesson of Lakut Ram, which I, I personally with a small Chabur happen to be learning the Iyo now. Um, Rabbi Nachman refers to the concealment within the concealment. We must we might be familiar with the song. Right? That's that's what it means. The concealment within the concealment. He said, you know what this what this is? It's not a person who's far from Hashem and knows it. That's okay. Because that's part of the that's part of the experience of, of life. It's going to be times of closeness, times of you know, distance. There's Yitzhar, there's Satan, Anachash, Amalek. That's life. That's Jewish life. He says concealment within a concealment, which is really re a, a reason for worry. Is when things are going so well in a person's life, and let's say they're doing really well financially, and they're busy doing and accomplishing and working on things, and it's working out for them. And the person never takes the moment to recognize that the years are, are, are whizzing by without the person's opening their eyes, that the person never even opened their eyes to recognize, like, I'm literally forgetting something so essential that it sits at the core and the premise for which I am in this world doing business dealing so I can put food on the table so I can continue to live, like I've forgotten it. That's called has. That's called hastar. Should say hastar, where Hashem is hidden from the person, but that fact is itself hidden, so the person never thinks about it. They're not even aware, right? That 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 they're distant, and that's 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 the most painful of all. The Yuvenal P. Mashal, and he gives a small parable. With this, we'll finish. So a person who Nebuch, one reason or another, just doesn't feel like he, he like he's needed in in the home. It just sort of the, the the home functions on its own, but in and they generally don't need this person. Like he's just not involved at all in the functions of the home. Never did bedtime with the kids. Is never around. He's always taking big business trips. Uh, you know, whatever. He's just not present, and the house just functions on its own. It's like a single parent, even though there's still a marriage. Whatever it is. It's like the home is just is has sort of gotten itself used to functioning on its own. When things eventually lead to a particular time of difficulty, all of a sudden, he doesn't know what to do. The wife, or if it's the husband, whatever it is, um, someone gets ill, and all of a sudden, all the responsibilities fall on the shoulders of the person that was never involved. He doesn't even know the questions to ask. He doesn't even know what, what's needed. That he, he doesn't know, like we said for Ibn Nassim last week when he was writing the Sefer on Israel, he doesn't even know what he doesn't know. Right? He's, he's so distant and removed from this experience. But of course, the dynamic is completely different if he's involved. He's involved. So things continue, they carry on because there's the involvement of the person. And they're constantly consulting him, asking him. He's 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 a he's a he's a, he's a perpetual presence in this in this home. Then he's he's there. He's an expert. because he's he's constantly like involved. Right? As we, as we all understand, right? The difference between these two things, and the same it is with Hashem in our lives. The more that we get used to functioning alone, like where we're not a part of, of the household, right? We're, we're not a part of the, the dynamics of like 
the, the, the way that life is unfolding all around us, why it is this way, past, present, future, big picture thinking, our connection to the community, the community's connection to the nation, the nation's connection to the nations of the world. The, the, the more like we, we, we're not accustomed to thinking in this way, and it's just life and life and life and life, when things start to unravel, we don't, we don't have the tools. We don't even know the right questions to ask. We're just, we're stuck, right? We're stuck. The last paragraph of Parag Beis, Kasher Yehudi Margulis Kol Sidre Chayav. But when a Jew arranges all of the different aspects of his or her life, Lios Tali Tamid Rak Bashem Izbarach, that it's all with the involvement of Hashem, all of it. Ketana Kigadayla, the small, tiny things, the big things, every detail. Such a beautiful Lashon. Such a beautiful words. He says, where the person does not leave in his or her world, afilu prat katan, even the smallest detail, that they don't bring into conversation with Hashem. Not the smallest detail, <coughs> excuse me, of life, that a person isn't speaking to Hashem about. Like, Hashem is a real presence. You could have really religious Orthodox Jews, they do everything right, but Hashem is not a presence in their life. Hashem is not, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a being that exists somewhere, it's not, but it's not a, you don't understand the difference? Like we're, it, He's not involved in the household. He's on a tree, he's on a business trip somewhere, you know, in, in, in the Olam of Bria somewhere. I don't know, somewhere else. He's, he's somewhere, but he's not present. It, it, so, so when a Jew lives in such a way where every detail is, is with Hashem, 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 Hashem. That's the main focus. Not even do we get caught up in different aspects of our religion, beautiful as they are, in such an idolatrous fashion where we start considering the ends to be the means and the means to be the ends. Where we forget about Hashem because we're so busy learning, let's say. We forget about Hashem because we're so busy with working on Midos. We, but, but Hashem though, like all this stuff, there are means to Hashem and to a life of real emuna, not just theoretical emuna, but lived emuna. Lived experience of Amunah. When a Jew lives in this way, Nasa HaKesher Pasuach V'Galui, the connection is, is just open. It's clear. You can all tell a person who's living this way. I think there was once a meme going around that um, a person who's si um, a sitter that's falling apart usually belongs to a person who isn't. Right? A person who brings everything into tefillah, a person who's really they're living with Hashem, then they've got it. They've got it because they're constantly hearing Hashem whispering into their ear. I'm giving you life. Not arbitrarily, not as a mistake, but with full consciousness. We call this in the context of Sim Shalom, Ki ba'ar panecha. Hashem is facing us. Ba'ar panav, ba'ar panav. With the light of His, of his countenance. Kiviyach. Ve'em azman. And with time working on this relationship, the more that we get it, the more we realize how much we need it because we see the difference in life. So the more that we're feeling this, the more it's like, wow, I, I realize I'm so reliant on Hashem. I don't have anything without Him. I don't have anything without Him. Because this person is constantly dependent in all aspects of life, the small, little, seemingly meaningless things, to the very, to the very big, important things. Hashem, 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 Hashem. When the dynamic shifts in such a way, then the question of how often can I hear from God that He loves me? It, it's moot. It's not even because it isn't just hearing nice words. We, we understand that it is the difference between getting tzedakah from someone who treats us nicely and it's good because we need something and he gives us something and that's it to a friendship so deep. Maybe we can even use a romance so deep because the engagement period really in marriage is the soul of the marriage because that's where it's really happening. After that, you know, things, things get down into the practical world and and, and, you know, it's all, in a way, can be downhill from that. But, but in terms of the romantic connection, in terms of the passion, you know, person, you can't think about anything else. You, you can't do anything. That person is the whole life. It's like there is no other person in the world. If we could have that with Hashem, if we could turn our engagement with all of our Hashem into that, that is a Yiddishkeit worth, worth devoting our, our lives to.
That's a Yiddishkeit worth giving over to our children. That's a Yiddishkeit which can position us so that we can have full tanks, like we said, and recognize how full the tank is that we have to give to others and to continue to be beacons of light in Hashem's world in a way of health and joy and, 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 and happiness and contentment. Okay, so Baruch Hashem, we've, we've, we've done a lot. Um, we've done a lot. I think this is number 12, right? I think this is the 12th shear from the beginning. And um, we've done the introduction, lengthy, to few introductions. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Be'ezrus Hashem and Chodesh Elul. In another couple of months, we'll be able to get back into the learning together. Take this time if you can to review, um, or not, or just take this time to just chill <laughs> um, and, and hang out with Hashem and, and, and build good relationships um, and, and work on those relationships. And then uh, we'll, we'll carry on the journey then.